Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Um, as it says, my name is Ian Walker. I'm the Global Director for the Protective Coatings Division of Axel Nobel. Axel Nobel is the world's leading coating company. We supply coatings from the wood coatings, from packaging coatings, so the insides of, of beer cans, uh, through to powder coatings, industrial coatings in terms of, of coil, to decorative coatings, and the, the marine, the protective, and the yacht, and automotive and aerospace arenas. Um, you'll probably, for those in the UK, know us better by our brand names. In the UK, uh, it's obviously Dulux in the decorative world, and international in the marine, protective, and, and yacht world. Um, today, I'm going to talk about coatings in the construction industry, in the, in the, uh, the tall buildings area. Um, I'm going to talk initially about how the urban landscape has changed and how coatings fits into that. And then talk specifically about the properties of coatings in terms of the durability, the functionality that coatings can bring, the sustainability that coatings can bring, uh, the production benefits, colour, which is what we always think of in, in coatings, and finally, to get our, our brains going at the end, just some innovative thoughts of what coatings could take us to in the future. So if we look, to start off with, the urban landscape around us is continually changing. You know, from the early 40s right through, there is a across the world, increasing demand for co tall, complex design buildings, which, in essence, are looking to maximize the footprint opportunity. Tall buildings are also uh, driving innovative designs. This has led to some unique architectural structures with inspiring results and the construction industry is uh, being challenged more and more to come up and meet the increasingly uh, challenging and innovative uh, designs. If we think about coatings themselves, coatings themselves are an integral part of the uh, construction process. They are used as a design medium to uh, help. And a good example is in, in structural engineered fire protection to make sure that the, the, the structural members are of the optimum and correct fire protection. And paint can be regarded as ubiquitous, but in fact the use of paint opens up many opportunities and many design opportunities, and a good example could be uh, long span beams to allow wider spaces in buildings. Many of the developments that we face across the, the coatings industry have been driven by tall buildings, the design of these tall buildings pushing the boundaries of requirements of, of aspects such as durability, such as fire protection, such as finished aesthetics and sustainability. And that's what drives a lot of our development and changes in this industry. But if we also look at the, the height and the heritage, new construction today, together with historical and heritage buildings, require suitable solutions to extend their serviceable lifetime uh, for, you know, further so that we can, rest and in heritage ones, restore them to their former glory. Extending maintenance intervals is seen as vital in terms of all buildings, and appropriate solutions can make sure that modern day tall buildings become the heritage of tomorrow. I guess the majority of, of you in, the, in this, this auditorium have been involved in the design of buildings at, at some stage with the speci specification or selection of materials used in construction. Many elements of a building 
are painted, are, or coated with a variety of advanced coatings and advanced products. And there is much more to paint than meets the eye. And in the next 15, 20 minutes, just want to outline some of those areas. If we go back a few years, typically the question on paint was, what colour do you want? But nowadays, as with all manufacturers in the, in the construction industry, we listen to the requests of designers. We're working alongside creative and innovative people. And so that the, the changes to our coatings and solutions are, are there to address specific issues and specific functions. So this presentation is going to concentrate on how we can contribute to a successful construction project. It will focus primarily on, the, on the, uh, the issues relating to tall buildings and in the context of the, those in, in all the cities. And it will show how we can reduce costs, accelerate schedules, increase returns, and create better buildings for the future. If we look first at durability and life to first maintenance, one of the key challenges with any construction project is associated with its life to first maintenance, or rather how long it will be before remedial work is required, repair work, or indeed replacement has to be carried out. Owners are looking for assurances that their buildings will be cost effective, not only to maintain, but also in terms of improving rental opportunities. So it's imperative that getting it right first time and it lasts for a long time is key. And coatings over the years have become more and more durable. But if we look at the exterior and the as maintaining the aesthetics and the long-term protection, in this, in this context, durability is essential. Keeping the building looking good for a long time. If we look at, uh, consider here, curtain walls and windows, the performance of these elements is important, not only from a structural and integrity view, but also from a durability requirement. The advent of high-performance paints for aluminium curtains in the early 60s opened up new design and performance options. The impetus for the, for the paint industry is then to, to develop products further to ensure that they stay looking good for as long as possible. The coatings need to obviously re be resistant to sunlight, to heat, to moisture, to uh, changing temperatures. And typically that's assessed by improved color retention and reduced changes in gloss. At the same time though, these coatings need to provide protection of the aluminium, prevent corrosion, so the, the, the external facade can last for a long time, not just both from an aesthetics perspective, but on a corrosion perspective. In terms of standards and industry bodies, the coatings world has, has, has worked with the, the standard setting. Initially, it would have been the, uh, the European standards, the American standards, uh, the global quality standards uh, setting bars to aim for, but the, the, the coatings companies working with the standards, developing better coatings, have increased the quality of the standards and improve those standards so that we get longer and longer lasting coatings. And nowadays you see many tall buildings around the world coated with today's coatings which give a real life track record. But it's not just for the internal, uh, sorry for the external, it's for the internal. If we think about um, paints for plaster, paints for masonry, if we can make those tougher, make those last longer, public places stay um, cleaner, longer lasting, and we can utilize those for that environment and make that space utilized for a lot longer time. And make sure those public spaces are kept in better condition. But then there's some paints, such as those used in structural steel, which can be regarded as less interesting. However, that is not the case. Traditional paints have been used, uh, single pack materials, 
but they've been su superseded by paints with much higher quality, two-pack material, a lot longer lasting, much better durability. And these fit in now with the increased use of space, the more exposed steel work, and there's no longer the need to cover up designs. And this gives greater options for architects. So I think then the durability, we'll then think about more of the, the functional protection, something that we, we don't normally associate with, with coatings. Um, functional protection is all about paints doing things. Uh, paint can make a building safer either by protecting the fabric or improving the environment for the occupants. A good example can be from different industries as well. Here, this is the latest uh, in the LNG processing world, the floating LNG processing world, where effectively you drill into the Earth's crust, release gas at high pressure, bring it on board, process it, and at the same time, put on a hotel and also a small airfield. There's a high risk for explosion, high risk for fire, and that's where functional coatings have, have come into their fore and been developed to help protect in terms of an explosion or a fire. And then that technology gets used into uh, other areas of, of industry and the construction industry and tall buildings. And just to show it is really a, also a tall building, the height of this on its end would be similar to the, uh, the Willis Tower in, in Chicago. But this fire protection and this functional protection is about life safety. And, and so when it comes to materials in construction, one of the most important developments that we've seen associated in structures, but particularly in tall buildings, is that of fire protection. The issue of safety is critical in life in, in tall buildings, um, but it goes without, without saying, ensuring that stability of that building in case of a fire, making sure that building doesn't collapse saves its heritage, but as importantly, making sure that that building does not collapse and destroy other buildings of heritage around it. And most importantly, making sure that the people that are in the building are protected and have some chance of escape. What we've seen is coatings that have evolved um, from origins basically in NASA, in the, the shuttle program, in the space re-entry, re into to nowadays thin coatings which are applied to exposed steelwork. Now the issue for these coatings is that when exposed to a fire situation, they expand. And you can see on the top of that slide, initially a thin film coating of hundreds of microns expanding and expanding to form an insulative char, which then protects and insulates the steelwork and allows people to escape from the building in case of a fire. But really, it's, it's more than just the visual aesthetics. The steel, work, the steel industry and the construction industry has embraced the use of these intermeshed coatings as a construction material. Around 20 years ago, they would not have been, been used. They were not common and they were considered really expensive. However, through increased commercial com competition, innovative development, working together, the growth of fire engineering these materials are now commonplace in construction. In fact, around London today, many of the tall buildings that we see have got intermescent coatings on and are protected by intermescent coatings. But this is going further. And what we're seeing now is internally, coating manufacturers are starting to incorporate their own fire design engineers and fire engineering di divisions. These te teams then work very closely with structural engineers, steel fabricators, contractors across the world to ensure the optimised, economic, safe and robust solutions. It's simply no longer a case of estimating the material. It's, it's actually a design, 
and using the building information models or BIM models with software to make sure that we have the optimum uh, protection system. And probably one of the best examples of, of this is the New, York, the, World the New York Times building. After the collapse of the World, the World Trade Center, this was the, the first tall building that was put up in that area. Here, we had to contend with slender exterior steel work in salty and wet environments, but there was obviously a conscious need to be concerned about explosion um, and blast hazards, and that was incorporated by utilizing the intermescent paints from both the oil and gas industry and the construction industry. Well, functional protection is not just limited to intermescent paints. We have surface spread of flame, where coatings um, for such as wall and ceiling tiles are painted with materials with low ignition risks, and that prevents the uh, risk of spray, uh, flame spread, and, the, and consequently, again, is another safety uh, that you can build it into the buildings and allow people to escape via the various stairwells or corridors. And it's not just uh, in fire. It can also be in the, um, the hospital environment or the food environment where bacteria is present. And there are coatings now which um, work against the bacteria and work against the, um, the issues there in kitchens to, to, to prevent spread of uh, infection. Also, what you're seeing now in China is coatings where formaldehyde is an emission. We've developed coatings which can absorb the formaldehyde both during and after the construction process from the, the, the wood application, and that is considered a major benefit to the construction industry. Sustainability means many things to many people, and manufacturers of construction products take their sustainability requirements highly seriously and very responsible. In terms of coatings, we work with LEED and, and, and BREEAM to, to work to find sustainable solutions. What we're also seeing, though, is that coatings have, have been used to help improve the sustainability, initially by the removal of lead from coatings. Um, more and more nowadays, we're looking at low VOC, low volatile organic compound materials, which are water-based or high solids to reduce emissions to the environment. <coughs> and then you've got examples of coatings which need lower temperature to cure, saving both energy and money, and paints that are durable, as we discussed before, which then require not a great deal of maintenance, not get a great deal of recoating, not a great deal of ex extra application, and consequently are good for the whole lifetime process. There are also now inter internal decorative coatings which can apply to walls, which can reflect more light within the room. This brings a double benefit of improved working environment at the same time saving energy and cost. Another example is exterior coatings, which reflect heat. And this can be metal cladding or masonry and the roofs can reflect sunlight. This is a double benefit of keeping the building cool, but also re requiring uh, less air conditioning units and consequently less energy and re reducing the urban island heat effect. But it's not just about the, the coatings. If we've got good durable coatings, then we don't need to transport coatings again because we only have to apply them once and you don't have to make them again. So that's a saving. But what we're also seeing is that we've moved to powder coatings, uh, which are basically 100% solids. Um, there is no solvent. There's very minimal wastage in these situations and consequently highly beneficial for the sustainable and the environment. And there's a lot less waste in this as there is in coil coatings applications. Productivity is key. The, we, have to need, we need efficient use of materials, uh, and that, for that's, that's essential for productivity for, 
efficiency and it's vital as we want to make the building be constructed as quickly and as safely as possible. What's essential in any coatings application is that good preparation, good application gives better protection. If we're going to apply to damp surfaces um, or we're going to apply to rusty surfaces, it's simply not going to work. So many of the benefits of the coatings depend on their application to the correct surfaces. And what we're seeing very much in the industry today is prefabrication. And this ties in very much with modern building techniques where a lot of the application is done off-site rather than on-site. So it comes prefabricated and is used in the construction process immediately. It saves a lot of time, ensures good quality, ensures the right quality, and does not in then interfere with trades on site during the construction process. Looking at curtain wall design, this provides another example of a paint implied, applied in a factory environment and consequently gives us the right quality. Aluminium extrusions are typically carefully cleaned, pre-treated before the paint, be it liquid or, or powder, is applied, but then it, those are applied under control conditions. Quality control relating to the paint is about the, the thickness and we can minimise the thickness to get the right quality. Perhaps the ultimate um, coating application of site is to uh, sheet metal which is fabricated in very fast moving lines but there's a, there's a coating applied to it as it's coming along those lines before it moves out to the fabrication process. One other aspect that we have to bear in mind is that we have to work together. We cannot work in isolation. We have to be aware that developments across the industry of new construction techniques are essential. In case of the curtain walling, we've had to keep step with the new developments there. Paints now have to be formulated which both adhere to the substrate, but also allow the adhesives of the, the, the uh, structural adhesives of the curtain wall to adhere to that, so that the, the, the paint, the curtain wall and the adhesives work it together to form an integral solution. Colour is what we all think about in coatings. It gives us that strong sense of identity. It's the, one of the first things that come to mind when we mention coatings. It can be uh, also a signal and used in design. And one of the, probably the best examples nowadays is taking what we see in the aircraft industry in their mica metallics and bringing these now over into the construction industry and taking that, that, that uh, expertise into the, the buildings of the future. At the same time, colour, colour and paint can be used in the whole process uh, it can be used in fixtures and fittings, such as radiators and lighting, and you have a whole coating solution which allows the architect to express his, his full design. And one of the, uh, perhaps one of the great aspects is the uh, Baracus Airport, where a series of graduated colour about a kilometre long gave a whole different meaning to that structure, and which would have been probably blocked in years ago, is now very visible to the uh, people. At the same time, we have the advancements in colour technology where we've seen uh, the coatings of the past of many years ago fade. We now use coatings of the future to restore those and uh, re-establish buildings of heritage back to their former glories, be it the Plaza Mayor in Spain or probably most recently, the Rijksmuseum in Amsterdam. If we then quickly look at innovation and what we see here, in some ways, I think the coating industry is still thought of today as a man with a, a, a brush and a pot of paint. Things have moved on significantly. You've seen some of what's happened over the last few years. But what's being looked at now is coatings which can absorb pollutants, and how that can be used, particularly in city environments, 
to main, um, maintaining heritage and, and used in tall buildings. Looking at self-healing coatings, which are ones which repair themselves, and this is coming from the car industry. Could that be used in the construction process? Looking at coatings with low surface energy. If we've got ice buildup in tall buildings in the future, could it be that coatings with low surface energy prevent that? Coatings that can create energy. We've seen uh, there's now work being taking place to see if coatings that can create energy and imagine that on a tall building and, the, and the, uh, no longer the requirement for the huge power plants involved in these tall buildings. At the same time, coatings that can give insulative properties and how they could fit within the cavity wall. And then perhaps even further, coatings that can be used on wind turbines at the top of buildings um, where we can then utilize that to power the, the energy for that building. I think in summary, what we can say, there is a lot of innovation taking place. There is a lot more to come. It comes by people working together in the industry and challenging it, particularly in tall building design, and see what we can do together to go forward. Thank you.